to talk about um, in yoga. And of course, you know, weight bearing um, on our wrists in yoga is one of, it's unique to yoga, right? Like there's not, a, um, a lot of forms of exercise are really done on our, on our feet more than they're done on our hands. And of course there's weightlifting and, you know, push-ups and all sorts of stuff that one can do um, on their hands. But in yoga, we're consistently on our hands and we're not used to this, right? We're not um, quadrupeds, we're bipedal creatures. So learning how to bear weight effectively and how to keep the wrists and hands and forearms and elbows strong and healthy is a really important part of our practice. So there's a few things. First of all, some basic alignment cues that I wanna go over. Just like in our feet, we have four corners of the hand. So we have the mound of our index finger, the mound of our pinky finger. I always call them, you know, like the mound or the root of your index finger. So if I say that, that's what I mean is the this space right here. Um, and then of course, either side of your wrist. So a lot of times we tend to lean into our wrists and, you know, this extension, this action of our wrist is extension, this is flexion. Um, when we go into extension, most people, their natural extension is about 70%, not 90. Um, and so if we go into 90 and then bear all of, all of our weight down on our hands, this can be very challenging for a lot of wrists. And when we can, when we get a lot of inflammation in our wrists, carpal tunnel syndrome, which I know all of you have heard of, you know, we have this kind of like sheath that goes across our wrist right here. And underneath it are all the ligaments and the tendons and the nerves and blood vessels and everything that go to our hand. And when we get inflamed in that spot, it can compress on the median nerve. And the median nerve um, innervates your middle finger, your, your index finger, and your thumb. So if you tend to get numb or tingly or weak um, in those fingers in your hand, chances are you're having some compression on the median nerve. And the median nerve, it, it doesn't have to necessarily be in your wrist. It can be anywhere along the channel from your neck down to your wrist. So when you're thinking about wrist support, really we need to start understanding the kinesthetic chain from our from our um, shoulder on, and really our neck on down. But the way we act in our shoulder in our yoga practices often impacts how we are in our wrists. So we're gonna do some you know, com combined movement patterns today in our practice. So I'll show you, which I've shown you before, some nerve glides, which are just ways to kind of stretch the nerve for the median nerve in particular today, but we'll do others as well. Um, and then the ulnar nerve, which you know passes on the side, that's the one that innervates this side of your hand. So if you have numbness in your pinky, that's a that's a whole different nerve pattern. So we'll get into a little bit of that. But just as far as alignment goes, having weight bearing on the four corners of your hand with the center of your palm, I think I've described it in class before. Like imagine there's a bee underneath your palm that you're trying not to get stung by, so that the four corners of your hands can yield. But there's a sense of kind of sucking up. Think of your feet when you ground all four corners of your feet and you lift your arches simultaneously. That's the kind of action we want in our hands. We want to have this yielding, this downward energy of grounding the four corners, but also a lifting energy, which will stimulate a lot of musculature in our hands. We don't really have a lot of muscles and we have no muscles in our fingers. Those are just tendons, but we have a lot of muscles in our, in our palms and in our hands. So we want to use those muscles to condense and support the wrist. So we're not just, you know, crank, just like anything, we don't want to lean into joints and lean into ligaments, which is what often happens in the wrist. So all four corners lifting the center. The last thing, or a few more things. One, to always look at the wrist creases that oftentimes when we're weight bearing, we can have an increased crease on the inner or outer rim of the wrist. So managing your hands to be in a place where you have evenness across the wrist crease when you're weight bearing. A lot of times if 90 degree angle of your wrist is not comfortable, moving your hands forward on all fours or in a plank or in dog pose, especially in dog pose, um, yeah, Solana, give me one second. Um, the, you, if you just move your hands forward a little bit, that can take away some of that extension and help you to balance. So the other thing to remember, besides the wrist creases, is that our hands, you know, when we're, when we're here or we're walking, whether the hands turn down or the hands turned out, our hand is really not, our wrist is really not in line with our shoulder, our elbow is, but our wrist tends to move out to the side a little bit, and this is normal. We, this is a healthy, normal way, but a lot of times we tend to say, put your wrists 
and shoulders in the same line. And a lot of times it's a little bit more important to think about your elbows and your shoulders, and perhaps your hands might feel more comfortable a little wider. So experiment, you know, do you like them a little bit more narrow? Do you like them a little bit wider? Don't assume that there's one size fits all, that, you know, taking weight bearing in different planes, as well as not just weight bearing up, down, out, in, but also turning hands in or out to get that sense of um, where is perfect for you. So um, intercept, go into your hands, go into your wrists, feel the positions that work best for you and know that you can move things around to have the alignment that you need. So um, that's all I'll say for now, but I I'm gonna have more to say. Alana has a question, go ahead. Yes. So I really appreciate, I never knew that the mounds meant here. I always thought that the mounds meant here, like in your fingertips. So your pads. Right. So my and question for your feet too, by the way, these are the mounds, <laughs> not your toe mounds. Thank these you. are the mounds of your feet that I'm talking about. So my question is when you're putting, when you want to put your, like you, are you suggesting that we still need to put the weight on the mounds or we need to put the weight on our fingertips when we're trying to like have the lift? So the last thing I'll say about that, thank you. This is helping me remember one thing I wanted to say. A lot of times people say spread out your hands and press weight into your finger pads, right? And this is good, but we can overdo this action. A lot of times people are like, stretch your hands. So it's better to have your hands wide and not together, but not to a point where you're, you're, uncomfortable, you know, where you're like spreading so far. So have a, a comfortable spread and you want your finger pads to press into the ground, but not to the point where you turn your, your um, nail beds white. You know, so if you are, if you're pushing a lot, you're going to have a change of color in your nail beds and you want to look for that so that there's some gentle pressure on your finger pads. Those are finger pads. I'll call these finger pads and these either knuckle pads or mounds of your hand. Um, so you want, yes, you do want pressure in your finger pads and you do want your hands spread and having that even weight, but you don't want to have it so much that you're, you know, like that your fingers are really tense because this will just aggravate the um, muscles in your forearms a lot if you do that. So we'll walk through it. I'll, I'll give some cues as we go to help you kind of find this and feel this as we move. Okay. So go ahead and sit up straight and tall and take a moment to find yourself. So whatever your day has held so far, maybe you woke up um, feeling really nice and in a good space, maybe you didn't get sleep and you felt tired. So whatever, however the day began, here we are. Let's just drop ourselves down into our sit bones, feel the grounding. Feel a sense of rising through your spine. Come into your breath. Feel a sense of opening across your collarbones. This hunched posture that we often can fall into, um, believe it or not, impacts your wrists. So see what it feels like to spread your collarbones out to feel your neck soften. Maybe even flip the palms of your hands up on your lap and uh, get the feeling that your shoulder blades are a little active on your back. And let's have a moment of deep gratitude for your hands. Think of all your hands do throughout the day. The ability to feed yourself and chop up vegetables and food, the ability to, you know, go about working through your home and um, all the activities of your work life, being able to text and type, being able to brush your teeth, being, I mean, everything you do, being able to hug, um, all the ways that your hands can feel and manipulate things. Let's just have a deep appreciation for the way our hands work, the way our wrists work and the dexterity and fine motor skills that we humans, this is like one of our defining things, right? So let's enjoy and have gratitude for our hands, even if you have arthritis, even if you, you know, broke your wrist recently or have any other pains. Now come into the tactile sensation of your palms and your fingertips. Imagine your favorite thing to touch, like maybe the fur of a cat or 
the silkiness of something, you know, whatever, whatever is um, a texture that you really like to touch. Um, have a memory of this and how nice it is not only to be able to manipulate our hands, but to have these nerves that can sense deep gratitude for the way our nerves make us able to move and feel through our hands. We can forget about the most simple of things that we take for granted all the time, being able to pinch your fingers together and pick something up. Place your palms together and feel your hands against each other gently. So there's no pressure needed, just ever so slight enough to feel each other. Feel the mudra. You know, the hands can have deep impact on our emotional states. There's a direct line right to our heart. Oh, and then offer an intention for your practice. Could have zero to do with your wrists and everything to do with something else. Just find what you need. Let's go ahead and relax and melt the hands. Let's come on to our back. Let's start our practice as we always do. See if you can feel your spaciousness, your body out in space, that sense of gravity spreading yourself out. Maybe stretch your arms overhead and feel the weight through your body, the right side, the left side, the, the opening, the awakening that happens in your rib cage, in your pelvis. Notice if your breath shifts at all. And then bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit from side to side. Feel into the back of the body, the pelvis. And then let's circle the knees. Finding that sense of rhythm as you rock over your sacrum, go the other direction. All right, and then right knee into the chest and left leg long on the floor. Already notice, are you, how do you do this? Do you interlace your fingers around your shin? Do you grab onto one wrist with your other hand? Just notice how you tend to um, act with your hands and then switch sides. And if you have your fingers interlaced, change. If you're grabbing onto a wrist, change, go the other way. All right, and then open your limbs out, spread your hands and feet and wiggle your fingers and toes, open your body up. And then exhale to close your body up. Lift your head if it feels good. One more time, expanding open. Exhale, closing and snug. Let's try it again. Feel the open, big old body. Exhale and release in. Now, if you have trouble with weight bearing on your hands, this is your opportunity to be creative in your yoga practice. Let's rock our knees left and right. If any part of your body has gotten sidelined, if you have an injury, if you know something hurts in your body or you're a little waylaid, there's, it's an opportunity for you to be creative in your practice. And this is really what it's all about is knowing ourselves, coming into our own bodies this moment and deciding how to treat ourselves with the most upright, utmost respect and care. Okay, so before we um, come on to all fours, let's roll over onto our side and come up to sit. So you can sit on your shins, you can even stand if your um, body's not happy with uh, being on your, on your knees or on your sit bones. And we're just going to shake out our wrists and do some rolls. So first start with this. I'm gonna get a little closer so you can see some of the subtle, subtle movement patterns I'm gonna do with my wrists here. So first just, Spin some circles with fists. Okay. And then spin the other way. Really good to warm up your hands before you're doing any activity with your hands. And now taking your fists, you know, with your thumbs facing you, we're going to um, keep the fists and we're going to rock our thumbs toward us and away. So, you know, kind of doing a side to side action. So abduction and adduction with our wrists. 
All right, and now you can, you know, imagine you're playing the piano um, or, you know, any kind of movement you want to do with your fingers. Then we're going to stretch our hands and release. Okay, and this is, this can be challenging for your forearms, so don't do too many. You don't want to get too fatigued and then shake things out. Now to find ourselves um, stretching the um, flexors of our, uh, I mean the extensors of our forearm, we're going to take a fist, curl it in, drop your wrist down like so. I'll show you from the side. We're going to drop our wrist down like so. Take your other hand and just gentle pull. Turn the eye of the elbow up and lift your chest. And then shake that out. And then the other side. Turn the eye of the elbow, like where you get blood drawn, up toward the sky. Wrist is tucked under, fingers are tucked. You can um, hold on to the wrist and just have a little extra pull. You may not need the extra pull. It might be already a huge stretch for your forearms and your wrists. So this is flexion. And then shake it out. And then to move into extension, we're going to start with a medium nerve glide. So first just have, well, we're going to do one-sided. Have your right hand straight out. And we're going to take our palm straight up and pull your finger away. You don't have to yank it super far, but just have it away. And first, we're just going to turn the palm over and tip our hand down. This is a, a warm-up for the medium nerve. It's not uh, huge for most people, but for some people, if you have a lot of compression in that carpal tunnel, this can be a huge sensation. Okay. And then to make it a deeper sensation, we're gonna turn our palm up and we're gonna stretch our hand out and tip our fingertips down toward the floor. So back up, palm out, fingertips toward the floor. Thumb stretches away. There's so many different ways to stretch the median nerve. This is just one. Now we're gonna add the head. Lift the ear, stretch the fingers down, and then back. Palm up, fingers down, lift the ear, shoulder blade moving down the back. I hope you can all feel a little bit of a nerve sensation when you do this. This is the median nerve that you're stretching. Okay, and then relax. You don't wanna to do too many, especially if you have an aggravated, uh, if your median nerve is aggravated, if you already struggle with some numbness issues, you don't wanna to do too many. Let's just start with the warm up. So palm out, thumb away, and just turn the palm open and stretch your hand forward. Okay, just a little bit of a warm up before we do a full posture. And now starting here, open up your hand, fingertips point down, palm is up, and then back. You can add the head when you're ready. Ear comes away up toward the sky. Fingertips point down. Find your breath. Now notice, I notice this feels very different on my left side versus my right side. So just notice what is happening for your body. Okay. All right, and then relax. Shake out your wrists. Um, palms together. Now, don't push so hard. Open across your chest. Drop your shoulders down. Feel the sense of extension. And then start to drop your wrists down a little bit. Press a little bit more firmly. Now, find the four corners of your hands against each other. And then inhale and lift your arms all the way up and cactus your chest open. All right, shake out your hands. And let's now come on to all fours. Okay. All right, so notice we've already warmed up our hands. So they're already awake. And so you already might have some sensation going on. So notice now, see if you can pay attention and look at how your hands are when you're on all fours. Do you want your hands directly underneath you? Do you want them forward a little bit more, which is easier on your wrists? Do you want them wider? Do you want your fingers turned out? Sometimes our index fingers pointing straight forward to the top of the mat or our middle fingers will create even creases around our wrists. Everybody's a little different and we are different on different days. So find the balancing act for you. Find just the where you want your hands to be. And then once you get your hands where you want them to be, let's find the four corners. So we're gonna press into the index finger mounds. We're gonna press into the pinky finger mounds. We're gonna press into the inner wrists and the outer, or the inner palm and the outer palm right at the wrists. 
Okay, so find your placement. And then the hands are spread wide, but not overstretched. So we don't want to have tension in our hands. We want to have a sense of balance between stability and ease, as always. And now we're going to use the muscles in our hands themselves to draw the uh, left and right sides of the palms toward the center and suck up the center of the palm. This is subtle. So we're not losing our mounds as we do this. It's just like our feet. We root the four corners and we lift the arches. Root the four corners and lift the palms. See if you can feel. Now look at your wrists. Do they need, do you need to adjust where your hands are in place? Are you white? Uh, are your fingertips turning white? Okay, see if you can find a nice balancing act. And then we're gonna yield. So yield into your right hand and then rebound and yield into your left hand. What happens when you bear more weight? Can you soften the elbow to rebound through your shoulder? Can you lose your lockout? Can you spread your hand? Maybe you need to walk your hands forward a little bit if they're gonna be a little bit more weight bearing. This is one of the reasons why in Vasistasana, we always have the hand a little bit more forward. So we take away that deep extension of the wrist joint. It transfers weight a little bit better through the body. Okay, now let's find, um, you can come out and shake this for a minute. Always there's ways to modify. You can take your forearms onto ground. You can take your fists onto the ground. You can take your forearms onto blocks. There's lots of ways you can roll up a mat and put it underneath your mat so that when your, your wrists are elevated so you're not in as much extension, there's always ways to modify lots for your wrists. And if you still can't wait there, you can come up and do things like all fours and don't pose with your hands against a piece of furniture or a wall. Okay, so let's start to find the shoulder blade connection here. So first, now not only are you doing all those things with your hands, but now hug your two hands toward each other before we even go to dog pose. Hug your two hands toward each other on the mat and feel that suddenly we don't have to bear so much weight in our hands because our torso is taking some of it. Undo that and notice if you just gain five pounds in each hand. Okay, so hug your hands toward each other Hug the palms up, or you know, the center of the palm up, hands toward each other, feel the integrity, and yield at the same time. And then relax, and notice if your wrists take more weight. So this is just another way that you can take weight-bearing way is by using some of the structural support of your um, upper body. Okay, let's find our way. Shake out your wrists for a minute. I know we're, we're spending a lot of time on the wrist, which is like the whole point to not hurt our wrists, but um, you know, shake things out if you feel like you need it. Okay. And then we're going to come up to dog pose. Now, because dog pose, we are not on right angles. We aren't in a 90 degree angle. We are in less. This is sometimes a little easier on the hands than plank pose or all fours. So find your way up. Always you can come down onto your forearms if you need to. Don't do dog pose on fists. The only time you should use fists instead of forearms as a modification to take the weight off, to get off your hands is when you're on all fours. Any other option, whether it's all threes or anything, you don't want to be on your fist. It's way too unstable and you can break your wrist easily if you fall off of a, a, of a wrist like that. Okay, so we're hands down or forearms down. Stretch your hips up. Find, forget about your wrist for a moment. Just find your body, find your breath. Get it out of the tree and into the forest of your body. Feel yourself, yield, and then discover when you're doing this, can you ground through the index finger mound? This is a place where we often lose. If we're gonna lose a corner of our four corners of our hand, usually it's the index finger mound that we lose. One of the beautiful things about grounding there is the pronators, the the muscles in our forearm that pronate our forearm work here. And this is in opposition to the external rotation of our shoulder blades that we always want to find in dog pose. And the combination of doing those two opposing actions is like wringing out a sponge. It's called force coupling, where we have oppositional action that really keep a joint. And in this case, it's three separate joints, four separate joints that we're keeping with a lot of integrity. Our wrist joints, our elbow joints, and the two joints of our shoulder. So pronate the forearms, root into the index finger mounds, and then externally rotate the upper arm bones, the biceps lift up toward the sky. Feel those two oppositional actions against each other. Hug firm on the shoulder blades, feel your rotator cuffs. Hug your hands toward each other on the mat. 
how, look, take a look. How are the spreading of your hands, the mound of your fingers, the finger pads, the wrist wrinkles? Do you want your hands further apart, closer, turned out, turned in? Find your place that is most comfortable, most easy for you to bear weight, a spread across your hands instead of rocking into one angle of your wrist joints. The next thing you can do to take weight off your hands besides hugging your hands to each other is to bend your knees a lot and yield and push off your hands to take most of your weight into your lower body. Relax your neck, breathe deeply. And then walk your feet forward and come into Uttanasana. That was a lot of time spent on your wrists, so feel free to loosen them up, shake them out. Inhale for a halfway lift. The spine is growing taller. And then exhale and melt, bend your knees. Let's try that one more time. Sit bones high and wide, extend the spine. So even when you have your hands on a block, if you look at how I'm holding a block right now, you can hold a block in different ways so that you're not just right angling on your wrists. There's ways to take the pressure off your wrists even when you're not fully weight bearing. Okay, rise up, bring your arms to the sky, open the chest, lean back, get the chest broad, and then exhale and round in. This is a great way to do cat cows if you can't be on your wrists or on your hands. You can do cat cows like this standing up. It's a great way to modify and still be able to move the spine. So rounding in and opening up. Okay. Shake your hands. Take a deep breath. Let's do some big shoulder circles here. Just warming up the shoulder joints. And then the last of the nerve glides we'll do today is for the ulnar nerve. I'm going to come close so that you can see. We're going to index, take our index fingers and our thumbs and touch them. You're going to broaden across your chest and stretch your shoulder blade or stretch your collarbones. We're going to turn the state, keep with your index fingers and thumbs. We're going to turn the palms up toward the sky, pull your pinkies down, spread across your chest, and then round to come back. Find the breath. So you pull your pinkies down and open up. So you should feel this across the channel of the ulnar nerve. So if you work with your hands a lot, if you're holding tools a lot, if you're like me and massaging a lot, if you play an instrument or you're on, a, you're texting or computing a lot, um, it's important to have a little bit of a routine to open up some of these pathways in your body that can get compressed by your work. Okay, shake that out, relax. And then take a deep breath, open things up again. Exhale and fold forward into Uttanasana. Relax the spine, shake your hips. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Come to a lunge, hands on floor or hands on blocks. Once again, you can have fists if you're very light, but it's easy to fall when you're on a fist. So, so light if you're on your fists. You can have your hands in the front of the box, so only the mound of your um, palm is there and your fingers point down. You can turn your hands sideways. There's lots of different angles you can take other than the hands flat on the ground. Move the shoulders away from the ears. When you're ready, rise up. Now let's open up this shoulder channel. So bring your hands in front of you, palms up, and then open up your hands out to the side. Feel the back side of your shoulder blades work. This is the back side of your rotator cuff, your infraspinatus, and your teres muscles that are live back there on the back side of your shoulder blades. Notice if one's a little stronger than the other. Do you have a little bit more awareness in one or the other as you open up? Reach the arms to the sky, take a breath, shake out your wrists up here, let them go. Freedom, softness. As you stretch your arms, can you be soft in your hands? So you don't want to um, over grip your hands, let them stretch without overdoing. Release your hands, fists, whatever you got, walk your back foot forward and fold in half. Relax your head. Halfway lift, same thing. You can always take fists, gentle fists. You can always have hands so that they're in a slightly different position. Exhale and melt back down. Step your other foot back. Come to a lunge on this side. 
so much of the time when we have our hands on the ground, we just kind of lean, right? So learn to not lean so much, to give our wrists softness, surrender. Find your breath, and then when you're ready to come up on this side, come up to a lunge on this side. Same action with the shoulder blades. Let's bring our palms up, facing forward. Have a little weight, hold a little rock in your hand, and then open. See what it feels like to not let the ribs pop forward, but to let the shoulder blades integrate on the back. How is your breathing? And arms up. Can you look at, I, I'll come down so you can see my hands on the screen. How about be super soft? You know, what does it feel like to just let your hands be, you know, the grace of, of ease coming out through your hands instead of having to work so hard, try so hard? Can you let air and energy just move out of your fingertips without it being so tense? It's amazing how we can hold tension anywhere in the body. Place the hands down onto the ground. Back to dog pose you go. Extend. Okay, so our wrists, how do you um, lift up that little carpal tunnel pocket? Can you have space there? Can you lift up the center of the palms, hug the hands toward each other? Try not to grip or um, tense your hands. Can you find strength without tension, tone without tension? Find the breath. Are your hands where you want them to be? And now come forward into a plank. Of course, this is probably one of the hardest on our wrists. So the first thing you can do is put your knees down if you need it. That'll take some of the weight bearing away. But all the things we've been looking at, look at the wrist wrinkles. Where do you want your hands to be? Forward, backward, out, in, turned in, turned out. Find just the right spot for you. Hug your hands toward each other. Four mounds down, center of palms, suck up. And when you suck up the center of your palms, Try not to um, tense so much. See if you can feel that this is um, balanced with the index finger mounds and everything else rooting. How are your shoulder blades finding that pattern? Soften the elbows, unlock the elbows, a slight little micro bend, shoulder blades. Can you feel how your core and your wrists are connected to each other? Okay, let's come down onto the ground. A great way to do cobra pose if you don't like weight bearing is to take your hands off the ground. So hover like little hover press. Take a deep breath in and lift up. Feel the muscles of your back work. Exhale and melt back down. Integrate your core. Feel the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. Find their way toward the spine and rise up again. Heads of the arm bones reaching away from the floor. Exhale and melt. To find a wider cobra pose to support our wrists, take your hands forward and maybe turned out and maybe wide. This will take a lot less pressure on your wrists than cobra pose will. Okay, so there's ways to modify. Extend open through your heart and then exhale and melt back down. Okay, shake out your wrists here where I know we're spending a lot of time on the hands and knees. Fingertips now. One of the main things that we often do as yogis is we pull our thumb back like this. See if you can keep your thumb in line with the rest of your fingers. They don't have to be, you know, all the way up there, but try not to pull your wrists, your thumb back. Keep them in line. Fingertips are broad. Inhale, lift up into a very wide spider hand cobra pose. Stretch through your legs. Exhale and melt back down. Come up onto into child's pose, take your spine down and lengthen your spine, feel your sit bones rock. Turn your palms open, take your arms a little wider, turn your palms open. Spin the heads and the arm bones, see if you can feel that external rotation. Breathe. Walk your hands back to a place where you think you want them to be, instead of super wide. And we're only going to turn our hands down. We're going to keep the arms, lift, get heads of the arm bones lifting toward this. Um, I'm sorry, roll the heads of the arm bones open into some external rotation. Can you find the index finger mounds? Okay, come up to dog pose. Place your hands where you want them to be. Find your breath. Inhale. 
lift the right leg up in the air. Exhale, bring your foot forward to a lunge, rise up. Okay. Arms extending to the sky. Can your hands be soft? Okay. We're going to turn and open up to the side. Virabhadrasana two. Shake out your hands. Okay. And then palms facing up again. Open up your arms out to the sides. Elbows are bent. So go as far or as, you know, not as far into the lunge as you want to be. Keep the collarbones broad. Start to feel that space across the collarbones stretch. And then we're going to lift our arms out. Sternum stretching to your fingers. Palms are up. Maybe you want a little bit of a median nerve stretch by stretching your fingertips down a little bit. And then relax that. Now we're going to keep the heads of the arm bones rolling back. So the shoulder blades moving down the back, the eyes and the elbows flipped up toward the sky. Only turn your hands down. Those finger, those index finger mounds, root them. There's nothing to root them into, but root them downward. Eyes and the elbows up, index fingers down. Find the breath. Can you soften somewhere? I come into a reverse warrior pose. Open up the rib cage. Find your breath. Okay. And then find your way into Parsvokanasana. Same thing. Elbows are close. We're going to open up both, even the one that's on our knee. Open up your hands. Feel the shoulder blades on the back. Integrate your core. Stretch the arms straight out instead of up over your head. Feel the heart connect to the hands. And then if you want to have a completion of the pose and bring the arm over your head, go ahead and do that. Root into your feet. And then come on up. Shake out your wrists. Okay, we're going to turn and go to the second side. As we bend our knee, see, you know, go as far as your knee likes to go today. Same arms are going to open up. When we have our shoulders in this position, feel the sternum broaden. See if you can stretch the collarbones. Work the muscles in the backside of your rotator cuffs to open you. And then relax the hands. Find your breath. Notice if your floating ribs are yanking outwards. See if you can integrate. And then stretch the palms straight out. Have a little weight in your hands. Eyes of the elbows up, shoulder blades down, stretching from sternum to fingers. Maybe the fingers want to stretch open. And then see what it feels like to only turn your hands. Eyes of the elbows up, index finger mounds rooting a bit. Keep the stretch from your sternum to your hands. Stretch into the length. See if you can imagine the nerves reaching, reaching to your fingertips. And then when you're ready, reverse this. Open the ribs up, stretch through your side. And then find your way into Parsvokanasana. Maybe the elbows stay down for a moment. Open up that arm, spread open the chest. Find your breath and stretch your arms straight out. Sternum to fingers. Feel your fingers. What kind of sensation are you having? Can you soften? And then as you're ready, you can stretch the arm overhead and extend. Shoulders are moving away from the ears. The hands are relaxed. So do you unnecessarily hold tension in your wrists and hands? Just like anywhere. We can hold tension unconsciously. Root the feet. All right, and then come back up and bring your hands down onto the ground. So decide, you know, hands forward, fists. You know, you can do all sorts of things to uh, have different positions with your hands. Okay, move on over to the front of your mat, dog pose. Find yielding, just like when we were on all fours and we yielded into the left and then we yielded into the right. Can you find a sense of the elbow softening to receive? Give to the earth, reach out of the earth. Give to the other hand, reach out. 
See if you can feel the channels of your wrist staying open, open locks. So there's no boundaries to block the flow of blood, the flow of energy, the flow of nerves. How are your index finger mounds? What happens when you hug your hands toward each other? Okay, let's come forward into a plank. When you get into deeper extension, how does that feel? Do you want to walk your hands a little forward? Is that better for you? Do you want to put your knees down? Do you want to come onto your forearms? And then find your way all the way down. Find child's pose for a moment. Stretch your arms, turn your palms up toward the sky. Stretch through your shoulders, breathing deeply. All right. Now come on to all fours. This is the last thing we'll do on all fours. This is a great way to strengthen the muscles in your hands and wrists. So once again, we're not, if you can see my, my fingers, we're not pulling the thumb back like this. We're keeping the thumb in line with the rest, not yanking it back. This is dangerous for our thumbs. Okay, so we wanna have good alignment and come up onto the finger pads and see if you can hug that you know, center of the palm and lift it up. So you might white knuckle a little bit or white fingertip a little bit. See what you can do to yield and lift and have some work. Now try to maybe do a cat cow while you're here and notice the strength, hug your hands toward each other. This is so gentle. We are not, you know, trying to uh, lift 60, 60 pounds with our finger pads. Okay, and then relax and come down onto your belly. Turn, bring your palms down at your sides. Turn the, um, or lift the heads of the arm bones away from the ground. The shoulder blades are working. The muscles between your shoulder blades are working. We're gonna inhale and lift the arms before anything else. Lift the, and engage the triceps, heads of the arm bones back. Stretch through your hands as you lift your upper body. And exhale and melt back down. Let's draw our left knee up toward our chest. And come rolling over. Let your chest open. See if you can feel the sternum stretch open through the front kinesthetic chain of your arm all the way to your wrist. Stretching out your pecs can make a world of difference for opening up those pathways for the nerves. Come back to center, onto your belly, change sides, other knee up. Okay, open up. I'm getting stuck by my furniture. Just to see what's available to you. Stretch open, let the knee leave the floor. Focus on how this feels across your chest. Stretch from your sternum to your fingers. And then roll on back again. Now, transitions are often where we lose our awareness. So as we come up, you know, you're gonna bear weight on your hands here to lift yourself up, whether you have your knees on the ground or not. Can you move your shoulder blades down? Can you hug your hands toward each other? Before you lift anything, can you integrate the ribs, the lats, the core, and then lift yourself up? And does that change something weight bearing? So let's try it one more time. The transitions of going down and up are often where our wrists just fall apart. So find it before you move. Shoulder blades down, core integrated, hug your hands toward each other, and come on up onto all fours. Find that all the way to dog pose. Extending through your spine. And walk your feet forward. Come into Uttanasana. Shake out your hips. Breathe deeply. Come on up to stand. Okay. So the other area that you know tends to get tight when it's we're talking about these nerve pathways down our arm is the scaling muscles in the side of our neck. You know, we slouch, 
we type, we curl, we do all the stuff that shortens these muscles. And when your scalene muscles on the side of your neck are tight, they attach onto your first rib and they can lift the first rib up when they're tight. There's a pathway between your collarbone and your first rib, which is already kind of a small space it's called your thoracic outlet. And when the scalene muscles lift that first rib up toward the collarbone, we narrow the thoracic outlet. And this is where all the nerves and blood supply from your neck go out to your arm, all your nerves, all three of your nerve branches, all your vessels. So we wanna keep this space open. So sometimes we can have numbness tingly down our arm, but the culprit is up here in our neck. So similar to a nerve glide, but we're just going to be here, stretch your palm open and down and lift your ear toward the sky. You can experiment with all sorts of ways. You can interlace your hands behind your back. You can grab onto a wrist and have a little uh, tug to support and then lift your ear. Once your ear's up, try experimenting. Move your chin around, chin up, chin down. Find the place that you need to stretch in your neck. And then shrug two shoulders up, and then we'll find the other side. So if you like to reach behind you and grab onto your wrist, that's a good choice. Otherwise, you can just have your hand open, palm facing forward, fingertips down. So whatever we want to do, we're going to lift up the ear and then start moving the chin up and down or anywhere that feels good. Go slow, go fast. Well, don't go super fast, but just feel into the experience of stretching your neck. So there's so much that can affect our wrists, our, our rotator cuffs, the muscles underneath our shoulder blade, around our shoulder blades, our neck, our elbows, our forearms, so many path things in the pathway that can impact how our wrists feel. Relax, shrug your shoulders up, take a deep breath, big circle, fold forward, wrap around a little bit, roll around in your shoulders. You get to have a pass on this if you're like, nope, already did too much, um, in which case you're going to take your forearm down onto the ground, or you can just skip this entirely. We're going to do a side plank. So always you can modify this with your forearm. I'll show this first. And you can do a few things. You can have the front foot um, like this. You can stack your two feet and come into a side plank. You can stack one foot in front of the other and come into a plank. There's lots of choices. So that's a plan if your wrists are not happy with weight bearing. Remember that 90 degrees of flexion with all of our weight coming down is hardest on the wrist. So if we move our hand a little forward, or if we roll something up and put a little lip underneath our wrist, this will take away some of that compressive force of extension and give our wrist a little bit more space. We're gonna come into your version, whatever that is, of Vasisthasana. Notice my shoulder is behind my wrist. It's not on top of my wrist. Drop the shoulder blades down the back. Feel the four points of that hand on the ground. See if you can feel the index finger mound. Look at your wrist and notice the wrinkles are all messed up or if they're in a line, do you need to adjust your hand in any way? Okay, and then exhale and release your hands down onto the ground. Change sides, modify anything that's need to be modified. The shoulder blade firm on the back will support the, the wrist. So if you are slack and not integrating your core, locking out the elbow, you're going to take a lot of weight into your wrist unnecessarily. Shoulder blade down the back, whatever choice you're making, shoulder blade down the back, open the collarbones, spread open the hand, suck up the center of the palm so the muscles of the hand are working. Just have your hand move forward more. If you're struggling, see what the wrinkles look like. Are you having your wrist, I mean your thumb in a good place? All right, great, and then relax to come out of there. Child's pose with your hands down at your sides. Let your shoulders, everything relax. Okay, now the stretch, the part of our rotator cuff that we've been working. Take your fingers to your low spine, your lumbar spine. You can interlace them if you want, you don't have to. Palms are facing up. And we're going to slowly melt our elbows toward the floor. Okay. 
and relax your arms. Finding a twist, we're going to drop our shoulder down and twist to one side. Move the back side of the shoulder, relax and open. Notice I'm not putting my wrist, my hand on the ground. I'm just switching sides without putting my hand on the floor. You can put your hand on the floor. It's just so many different ways to um, be conscious of taking weight off your wrists through your practice. Transitions are a place we often forget about. And then relax and come on to your back. Roll the shoulders under, either a passive or an active bridge pose. So you can stick a block underneath your pelvis if you want it to be passive. If you want it to be active, be active. Roll the heads of the arm bones open. Start with your elbows down and your palms up and then slowly bring your backs of your hands to the floor with your palms to the sky. Open across your chest one last time and then release and melt this pose down. Knees to the chest, what do you need before Shavasana? Do you need a hip stretch like um, reverse pigeon? Do you want happy baby pose? Do you want a twist? So, you know, choose your completion of your practice. So whatever postures your body's calling for. And then as you are ready, you can find your way to your version of Shavasana and there's no rush. So, you know, if you have a couple poses that your body's like, oh yeah, I need a little stretch there, a little goodness here, um, feel free to take any variation of anything that you want. As you find your way toward Shavasana, and once again, there's no rush, make sure that once you get there, you can totally relax your shoulders, your arms, and your wrists, your hands. If you're a, if you work with your hands a lot, it's really important for you to practice Shavasana of the hands. Savasana is so important for the whole body and the hands are no exception. So melt, sometimes I put sandbags, um, you know, a little weight in my palms to help them soften. Are all four of your limbs able to rest down? Can your head relax? Those muscles in your neck, can you let them go and soften? Melt the breath, the belly. Soften everywhere.
Let's begin to deepen our breathing. Feel free to move around any way you want to move around. Take your time. And as you're ready, let's go ahead and come on up, coming to sit. Even here, can you be mindful of your wrists bearing your weight as you transition onto your side and help yourself up? As you come to a comfortable seat, put your hands in a happy place. So palms down, palms up, palms together, wherever you're best. And let's take a moment as you gather yourself and come upright to once again think about all the things your hands do for you, all the things your wrists do for you, your fingers do for you. From the minute you wake up until the moment you go to sleep, really rely on this very important part of our body. Let's not take it for granted, let's have deep sense of gratitude for our health. Place your palms together and offer this gratitude outward. Share your energy. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Good to see you 